Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is May 30th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Yumi New is the first plus size Asian model to appear on the cover of the swimsuit issue of Sports Illustrated. Yumi, who is half Asian and half white, has been a model since she was a child, yet she says she spent years rejecting her Asian side because she rarely saw Asian women being celebrated for their beauty. Her Sports Illustrated cover came as a surprise. She said she thought she was doing a mock interview about her life with the editor of Sports Illustrated when they surprised her by showing her a photo of herself on the cover. Congratulations. In other news, engineer Elizabeth Bourne was handpicked by French President Emmanuel Macron to become France's new prime minister early this month. Elizabeth is France's first woman prime minister in more than 30 years. She served as transport minister and ecological transition minister under President Macron during his last term. The French constitution gives the president the power to appoint the prime minister who then oversees the execution of legislation. In essence, the prime minister of France is the person who controls the government of France. French prime minister Elizabeth Bourne's childhood was marked by the suicide of her father, Joseph Bourne, a Jewish resistance fighter of Polish origin who survived Auschwitz but never recovered from the experience. After she was appointed prime minister, she was asked who she first thought of when she learned she had gained the second most powerful position in France. And she replied, I thought of my father. Keep going, Elizabeth, keep going. In other news, based on an analysis of data retrieved from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, patients with mental or physical health problems have turned to cannabis over doctor prescribed medications. So far, there are about 40 states which have legalized marijuana for medical usage and 20 states which have legalized marijuana for all personal use. Legalized marijuana has been found to reduce demand for costly prescription drugs through state Medicaid programs as it can produce similar results for pain relief, depression, anxiety, sleep psychosis, and seizures. Very interesting. Replacing traditional prescription drugs with marijuana would eliminate the high cost of buying prescription drugs, but also the side effects that some drugs have. Let's talk to our resident toxicologist, Dr. Kelly Arbor Johnson. Welcome back to the Feisty, Dr. Kelly. Could the legalization of marijuana be the breakthrough the medical industry needs to help people recover from illnesses with less drawbacks than prescription drugs? So marijuana or cannabis has been used by people for a lot of different conditions, anything from um, post-traumatic stress disorder to pain to other conditions. And so because of this, it's not surprising that people are using cannabis instead of their prescribed medications to, to self-medicate and treat their own conditions. The problem is for a lot of these conditions, we don't have any good evidence that cannabis or marijuana is actually helpful in treating the conditions. So this is actually potentially dangerous for people to do. Prescription drugs have been studied and they have clear benefits and clear indications for use. When people are using marijuana to um, self-medicate for certain conditions, we don't know that those conditions are going to be effectively treated by the use of cannabis. And so it's certainly dangerous for people to substitute medical advice and to instead use cannabis. People who use cannabis instead of their prescription medications may also be at risk for having more health problems because they're not going to the doctor. And that's also a very valid concern here. We do want people to keep going to their primary care doctors for preventive maintenance visits and things like that. So the, if people are using cannabis instead of their prescribed medications, they might go to the doctor less frequently and they might have health problems like high blood pressure, diabetes, or cancer that might go undiagnosed. Oh, I see, Dr. Kelly. You're so right. Cannabis can't be a one-size-fits-all cure for every illness, though I'm sure if you're high enough, it probably feels that way. <laughs> well, it's time for a break. What happens when a woman meets her soulmate while she's married? And ring the alarm, we found another good man. You have to meet him right after the break. Don't miss it. 
Hi, my name is Ginger King. I'm a cosmetic chemist and brand owner for Fan Love Beauty. Fan Love Beauty is an inspirational beauty brand. We develop beauty products for people who inspire, educate, or entertain the society. The inspiration of my clean beauty brand Fan Love Beauty came when、um, my celebrity crush, business mentor Damon Zhang of Shark Tank, was with me at a meeting. And he took out a lip balm in front of me. I was like, Damon, if there's something that's so close to you, that's in your pocket on your lips, it has to be mine because I'm a cosmetic chemist. We also donate part of the proceeds to Suicide Prevention Foundation because we believe if people can stay longer and using beauty products that are healthy and good for them, they will have even more contribution to the society. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about the woman who says she met her soulmate while she was out to dinner with her husband, and then she left her husband a month later so that she could be free to be with him, only to have him tell her that he is not interested in her? Girl, yes, that happened to Amanda Trenfield, who wrote all about it in her book When a Soulmate Says No. This is what Amanda wrote. As I settled into my seat, I looked up and immediately lost my breath. When our eyes met, there was an instant familiarity that ran deeper than water cooler chat. These eyes had locked before, twelve years earlier. His name was Jason. I hadn't forgotten. The pair continued to drink and talk into the night, with Amanda insisting that her attraction to Jason only intensified. Their evening ended with a hug, and Amanda whispered into Jason's ear, "This isn't over." I need to see you again. Less than a month later, the mother of two left her husband of 14 years and broke apart her family to be free to be with Jason, despite not having had any other communication with him since the night of that dinner party. Since then, she says she has exchanged a few short emails with him over the years, but today has no contact with him. She has not seen him in person since they met, although she tried, but he said no. He said he moved on and is happy with someone else. Well, the internet went crazy with criticism for Amanda's decision, with most calling her selfish and a terrible mother for breaking up her family. Amanda told a reporter that she was quite hurt by all the negativity. She went on to explain that meeting Jason allowed her to see what was missing from her own marriage, and it served as the catalyst to let go. You know what? I get it. I can't judge whether her decision was right or wrong for her because that is her life. How many of us would throw away the often mundane reality of a real life? For a chance at a romantic fantasy, I can say that she did the right thing to leave her husband if she didn't value his partnership. She should definitely let him go so that he can be free to meet someone who will. Letting someone go so that they can find someone who can love them better and properly—that's an example of real love. In other news, do you know a good man? I'm trying to believe they exist. Watching the news will make you believe the word "husband" is a cold word for murderer. I won't lie; 100% of the time, I feel unsafe and uncared for in the presence of men. As I navigate this life journey, I notice that when men realize that you're alone, they see you as a target to be exploited and taken advantage of, instead of someone who should be protected. But even with all of this negativity from the inside and outside, I try to find examples of exceptions just to give all of us a glimmer of hope that there are good men out there. Now I know for sure that good men exist because I've been inviting women from around the world to share their good experiences with men in a segment called "He's a Good Man." This week, we found another woman who says she's had a remarkable experience with a good man. Hey, Drea, do you know a good man? Yes, I know a good man, <laughs> and his name is Christopher Thornton, and he's my husband.、Um, I am a singer and songwriter. Uh, and my, me and my husband met when、uh, we started working together, just from a music side. And the first thing he did when I met him was fly me out to、uh, San Francisco, to where he lived, 
and uh, we started working together. And I I knew from that that point, like when I first met him, I was like, this guy's kind of dope. He flew me out. He's serious about working with me as an artist. And from that point on, he's always been super like just protective, just super supportive, um, always supporting me in my career. Um, as we grew as friends, we ended up dating each other probably about six years later after our working relationship. So I was able to know him as a friend and um, we, we just became really good friends. And then we decided to do business together um, and start our own production and music uh, company together. And um, he just encompasses everything that I've always wanted as far as protected. My dad makes me feel protected. And so to be able to be with someone that um, he's from, he has an army background. So he's very um, assertive, very strong, very strong willed, has great mental, um, just focused. The man works like crazy, overworks, and he pushes me to be, be the best that I could possibly be. Um, my work ethic wouldn't be anything without him, my life honestly has just done nothing but accelerated being with this man he is um super intelligent um he's a he's a techie so uh you know a techie and a producer so he his mind is always working he's always troubleshooting and um our relationship has been it hasn't been perfect it's been rocky but it's been rocky in a good way because he's a honest person. And so when you come to the table with honesty, it allows, you know, both parties to be honest with each other. And so we've just had a relationship of just honesty, love, differences. Um, but at the same time, like we make great partnership and he's my soulmate. And I know that we've been together, we've been married for gosh, 12 years. So I know um, we hold a greater purpose for what we do as a team and together. And, um, you know, he just has so much passion for helping people and loving people. And I have the same passion. And so we work together so well to be able to change other people's lives um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is something that we have committed to doing with each other. And um, I honestly can't imagine myself with anybody else. Chris Thornton, you are a good man. Thank you so much for loving Drea so well that she can stand up to be an example to women of what it feels like to be loved properly. May prosperity and favor follow you with every step you take, Chris. Well, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the fight. 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 Welcome to the fight.